The global ecological crisis that we find ourselves in today presents not only one of the biggest threats to the human family, but also to all life on Earth. The ecological crisis is made up of a wide assortment of interconnected problems, ranging from climate change to biodiversity loss, from resource depletion to air pollution, from soil degradation to plastic pollution, plus many more. All these crises each pose significant challenges to the global family, not only in their complexity, but also in scale. Faced with this global and urgent threat, many believe that we can engineer our way out of this crisis. After all, technology and the Industrial Revolution got us into this mess, therefore technology and human ingenuity can get us out of it. But trying to solve the ecological crisis by developing new, technical solutions can only treat the symptoms, not the cause. For the crisis we now face, given its complexity and interconnectedness, demands a new approach if we're to treat its roots. This requires a new way of seeing, thinking and acting. The Catholic Church calls this integral ecology, and this approach offers a profound insight into how we can tackle the ecological crisis in an integrated way. When we view the crisis through the lens of integral ecology, rather than seeing each discrete problem in isolation, we begin to see that everything is deeply interconnected. This integrated view reveals a deeper insight. Not only are the ecological problems interconnected, but there is also an interconnection between the ecological crisis and the human crisis. For the human crisis, just like the ecological one, is made up of a wide range of issues affecting the human family, from extreme poverty to social inequality, from modern slavery to human trafficking, from poor working conditions to mass migration and many more. Through the lens of integral ecology, we can see that we are faced not with two separate crises, one environmental and the other social, but rather with one complex crisis, which is both human and environmental. Or, to put it another way, the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor are the same cry. Everything is interconnected. The insatiable desire for economic growth drives the production and market for ever cheaper consumer goods, which drives the depletion of Earth's natural resources and is also a driver for cheap labour, which drives poor working conditions, which drives weak environmental standards, which drives pollution, which drives greenhouse emissions, which drives climate change. All of these issues are interconnected, and each problem cannot be solved without tackling the others. Integral ecology shows us that the ecological crisis is not simply a series of problems to be fixed, but rather is a symptom of something that goes much deeper. Because at the heart of the ecological crisis lies a deep human and spiritual crisis, in that we have forgotten who we are and where we have come from. Nature is not something separate from ourselves or a mere setting in which we live, but rather we are part of nature, included in it and in constant interaction with it. We have forgotten that we ourselves are dust of the earth. Our very bodies are made up of her elements. We breathe her air and we receive life and refreshment from her waters. Just as ecology is the relationship of living organisms and their environment, we cannot regard ourselves as separate or disconnected with the ecosystems in which we live. Just as the Earth's ecosystems have worked harmoniously for millions of years, we too are part of a complex network of interconnected relationships that we may never fully comprehend or understand. When we forget where we belong, we behave as lords and masters over creation, entitled to plunder her at will. Creation is viewed simply as an object to exploit. And that same mindset of domination is how we treat each other. When we view reality through the lens of integral ecology, we can see how all creation is a web of life that includes human and social dimensions. By understanding where we belong and our interconnectedness within the ecosystems that sustain us, we will no longer see God's creation as an object there simply to serve our needs, but rather we come to a deeper understanding of our interdependence and our place of belonging 
within the delicate web of life. And by doing so, we can start to care for each other as well as the earth, our common home. And given the urgency of our current situation, this new way of thinking and acting is needed now more than ever.